Good afternoon and welcome to our week one lecture. Hopefully at this point you have already gone into the MyCF portal, uh, you've gone to Canvas, um, and you've looked at the different modules that are located under this class in Canvas. Uh, last lecture, the welcome lecture that I gave to you guys, um, I focused primarily on how to access Canvas and also uh, how to get to the syllabus which covers all of the class policies, how I do the grading, things like that. Uh, hopefully at this point you're already familiar with the syllabus. I recommended that you print a copy, have a hard copy of that in front of you. If nothing else, that'll help you with the syllabus quiz, which we'll talk about a little bit. That's going to be due this week. So that's what we covered in our last lecture. Um, today, I, what I'd like to do is I'd like to cover uh, the different things that will be due this week, uh, reading assignments, the different quizzes that are uh, uh, up on Canvas for you guys to take this week, uh, as well as spend a little bit of time on the narrative essay, which is your first essay. Uh, you will be um, needing to complete that essay by next week, so I'd suggest get writing uh, as soon as possible. But in any event, let's cover some of the things that are coming up, and we will go by these kind of step through by step. Uh, first, when you go to Canvas and you look at module number one, you'll see something like this, all right? And it will show you uh, at the very top, it says about discussion boards. I'd like you guys to click on that link. That'll take you to the discussion boards to a pin post that gives you some general information about the discussion boards. Remember last time I talked about these, I said this is how I will be monitoring your attendance as well as your participation in class. Each week, you'll get a new prompt. You'll have to write about 200 words or more on each of these prompts. And in addition, your classmates will be replying to the prompt and you're required to respond to a minimum of two of your classmates discussions um, in about 50 words. So the basic information on the discussion boards is located under Canvas, module number one, the very first item under module one, week one, says about discussion boards. Click on that link and it'll give you more in-depth information about the discussion boards. So that's the first thing I'd like to cover today. The next is you have several reading assignments that you should get done this week. Um, this week is a little heavier than most weeks as far as reading assignments because it's the beginning of the semester. Uh, we have to get some of the things out of the way, uh, but I'll talk about those reading assignments right now. The first is in Strategies for Successful Writing. That's one of your two required textbooks. And you need to read pages 149 to 165. Uh, that chapter is on how to write a good narrative essay. Since you guys will be writing narrative essays, in fact it'll be due early next week, um, I highly recommend reading this, going through it, kind of getting an idea for what makes for a good narrative essay. We will talk more in depth about narratives at the end of this lecture. I'll go over some suggestions, uh, some ideas, uh, but you need to do the background reading in order to be familiar with what makes a good narrative essay. Uh, the second reading assignment is in Easy Writer. Uh, this is very short, actually. It's pages 129 to 130 in Easy Writer, as well as pages 164 and 165 in Easy Writer. This section talks specifically about MLA format, and I know I talked a little bit about that last week. Essentially, MLA format is how you will be submitting your essays for this class. MLA format includes things like having a title, having the page numbers, having a correct header at the top of the page, um, correct margins, double spacing throughout. All of those things will be covered on pages 129 and 130 in Easy Writer. And then there's a great example on pages 164 and 165 of what a college English paper should look like. So I would just look at 164 and 165 that is what your paper should physically look like as far as the double spacing, the header, things like that. 
I always tell my students, it's a good idea. You've written your essay, you're getting ready to submit it. Before you hit the submit button, look at page 164 and 165 in Easy Writer, and if it looks like that essay, as far as double-spaced, no big gaps between paragraphs, proper margins, a proper header, if your paper looks like the one on page 164 and 165, the chances are your paper is written in proper MLA format. But you will need to read those uh, four pages, essentially, so you get the gist of how to write a proper MLA manuscript. All right, the final assigned reading is also from Easy Writer. Uh, remember last week I said um, that there are commas. Um, there is grammar that we will be covering in class. Uh, the first item of grammar punctuation that I cover in my class for students uh, is commas. And the reason for that is that students frequently struggle with proper comma use. So you will read the section in Easy Writer. It's pages one, or 346 to 357. Uh, this is not something you have to read in depth but I would certainly skim through it and see if you understand uh, what's necessary for proper comma placement. So read that, that should prepare you for the quiz that we'll have on commas. I find that if my students do the reading, for the most part they do really well on the comma quiz. In addition, if you look on Canvas, you'll see something that says comma, uh, the comma PowerPoint um, you can also click on that link. Those are kind of my class notes for commas. So uh, that'll also give you some suggestions. It's more supplemental information on commas. Uh, but you can look through that PowerPoint and it'll give you a little more detailed information. Uh, it goes very well hand in hand with the assigned reading. In addition, most of you have probably bought the Easy Writer book with exercises. And you can go to the exercises section, find the section on commas, um, and take some practice or do some practice exercises. Uh, that'll also help prepare you for the comma quiz. I don't require you guys to use the exercises, uh, but if you're a little nervous about it or if you've always struggled with proper comma use, this is probably a really good way for you just to get some practice before you take the, uh, the quiz on commas. So, assigned readings. You're going to read about narratives and strategies for successful writing. And in Easy Writer, you're going to read the sections on MLA manuscript format as well as the sections on commas. So that is your assigned reading for this week. I always recommend get it done earlier in the week. That way you have time to digest it. Or if you have a question about it, you can contact me through the Canvas inbox. Uh, if you wait till right before the comma quiz to do the assigned reading, if there's something you don't understand, you won't have the opportunity to reach out for me to give you any help or any suggestions. So try to get your reading done early. That should help you guys. Now, this week is probably the week where you have the most to do as far as quizzes and things like that. And the reason for that is, there are some things we just have to get out of the way the first week of class. Uh, as mentioned, you have a syllabus quiz. I have to have that done the first week of class. Um, that's actually used as a way for me to demonstrate that the, to the administration that you were here for the first week, you've done your work, or at least some work, and that allows them to disperse financial aid. Um, and it also allows you to keep that financial aid because you've already participated in something in class. So we do the syllabus quiz the first week. That has to be done this week. The deadline for it, if you look on Canvas, and I will scroll up, um, but the deadline for the syllabus quiz is July 3rd, and you can see that on Canvas. Uh, to take that quiz, you simply quick click on the syllabus quiz link. It'll open up. You'll answer the questions. Uh, it is timed, but you have plenty of time to do it. Most of my students finish it in about three or four minutes, especially if they've already read the syllabus and they've printed a hard copy of the syllabus to use as a cheat sheet while they take the quiz. So anyway, this week you're going to do a syllabus quiz. 
The other thing that we have to do the first week, and it makes the first week a little bit tougher, is I need to make sure that all of you guys understand the concept of plagiarism and academic integrity. So if you look to Canvas, also do by July 3rd, um, there's a quiz on academic integrity and plagiarism. When you open it up, there's a quick video on uh, plagiarism, and there's also a handout from CF's library that talks in depth about plagiarism and academic integrity. Those two resources, if you read them, if you watch the video, will make sure that you do really well on the plagiarism quiz. But this is just something we have to do the first week. So down the road, I don't get any, well, I didn't know that was plagiarism. So make sure to take the academic integrity plagiarism quiz this week. Now, we talked about the comma quiz, that's due this week. We talked about the syllabus quiz, or the uh, syllabus quiz, and we talked about the plagiarism quiz. All of these are relatively quick. They should take 10, 15 minutes of your time maximum, um, but you do need to get these completed this week. If you turn them in late, uh, you will lose points for them being submitted late. I'm telling you right now, they're pretty easy. Just get them done. Make sure you do the appropriate reading for commas. You'll do well on the comma quiz. Make sure you have a copy of the syllabus in front of you when you take the syllabus quiz. Chances are you're going to ace that quiz. And then review the video and the handout from CF's library on plagiarism. Um, and the chances are you're going to do fine on the plagiarism academic integrity quiz. So those are the quizzes that are due this week. The other thing that you will need to do this week, as well as every other week, is we will have that discussion board. So on week one, if you go to Canvas and you go to week one, you'll see that there is a link to the week one discussion board. It's open from June 29th, that's the first day of class, through July 3rd. That means you have all of that time to open up that discussion board, read the prompt, and then respond in a minimum of 200 words, as well as responding to your classmates' responses. As I mentioned, this is how I take attendance. This is also how I measure class participation. So you can read the background information on discussion boards. That's at the top of Canvas for week one. And then you're going to go to the actual discussion board for week one, and you will contribute your part of the discussion. So that's something we're going to do every week. Um, and it's really important you do that because participation is a significant portion of your grade and attendance if you don't do this every week your grade can be affected by poor attendance and that's reflected by your participation in the discussion boards so those are things that you will need to do this week those things are all very important finally uh, this week on Wednesday from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock I will do a Zoom meeting for the class. This is purely optional. I don't take attendance. You're not required to be there, but many students like the interaction of being able to ask questions um, or if there's something that needs clarification or they're not sure. I put it in the middle of the week. I always do them Wednesday at 10 o'clock so that you have an opportunity to ask and I can respond and give you a direct answer as opposed to you sending a Canvas inbox message. It also gives you a chance to meet some of your classmates, uh, not face to face, but at least see them during the Zoom meeting. Uh, there is a link for the Zoom meeting. It is down at the bottom of week one under Canvas. Uh, you'll click on that link. I will send you guys the invitation to that Zoom meeting as well as the access code. Uh, sometime before the Zoom meeting starts, you'll need that to be able to actually get into the Zoom meeting. As I said, it's purely optional. Personally, I think it'll help you, uh, but I certainly don't require you guys to be available from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock on Wednesdays. It's just something I put out there so students have access to that type of interaction in class. All right. So those are the things that you're going to kind of 
the administrative things, the basic things that you guys are going to have to do this first week of class. The other thing, and probably the most important thing, uh, one of the things that carries the greatest weight as far as your grade, is you're going to start to need to write your narrative essay. You don't need to write your narrative essay in one sitting. Uh, I certainly recommend kind of starting out slowly, jotting some ideas down, perhaps walking away from it for a day, get back to it, maybe write your introductory paragraph or perhaps um, a couple of paragraphs. Um, but it's something that should be done over the course of the week so that when the due date comes, and I believe that's next Monday, um, you will be prepared to submit it on time. You're not rushing the night before to get this done. I can tell you from over 10 years of teaching experience, the best essays that are written are not done the night before. The ones that are done the night before might pass. They might get a passing grade, but they're certainly going to be at the lower end of the grading scale. Students who start writing early, edit it a little bit, revise it, walk away from it, come back to it, those students traditionally do much better on the assignment. So I recommend once we discuss narratives today, um, once I show you how to access the narrative prompts, um, that you start writing immediately so that by the time Monday rolls around next week, you're pretty much ready to submit this assignment on time. So let's talk about narratives. Before we do, I want to draw your attention to Canvas. And you'll see on Canvas, there are two items here. And they're both files, they're both links to files um, that talk to you about narrative essays. The first is that it says ENC 1101 narrative-1 docx. That is your narrative assignment. That gives you what you are required to do to write this narrative. Let's bring that up for you. So I'm going to click on that link and I'm going to open it up and we will discuss it. Let's try to blow that up so it's easier for you guys to see. So this is your first writing assignment for ENC 1101. Um, your narrative needs to be in proper MLA format. This is available on Canvas, so you don't even have to take notes here. Uh, just know where to find it on Canvas, and you can go back and look at it. Um, but the, es uh, the essay must be in proper MLA format. That means a proper heading. Uh, you have to have page numbers on it. It should be double-spaced. You need a proper header. You need a title. Um, needs to be 11 or 12 point font in either Times New Roman or Calibri font. Those are the accepted fonts for MLA papers. Um, the essay has to be a minimum of 1,000 words. And when I say minimum, I mean that very strongly because, remember, last lecture I talked about the Gordon Rule. You have to do a certain amount of writing in this class to pass. Students who don't meet the minimum in many cases end up not meeting the Gordon Rule requirements and they don't pass the class. So a thousand word minimum, I don't count off if you go over. Uh, if you write 2,000 words, I'm probably going to throw something at you. Uh, but it should be a thousand words, perhaps 1,200 words, 1,300 words, uh, but no more than that. It's really not necessary. Um, so that's the first point under the narrative. The second this is really your opportunity to tell me about yourself. Last lecture, I spent way too much time talking about myself when I welcomed you to the class. This is your opportunity to tell me a little bit about you so I know a little bit about you, a little bit about your background, the way you think, things like that. So one of the things that's important when you write a narrative, and we're going to talk more in depth about this, one of the things that's really important is incorporating a lot of detail and a lot of description in your essay. So remember that, keep that in the back of your mind when you write this, 
after you've written a rough draft, go through and say, did I detail this enough? Is there enough description? If you answer yes, chances are you've written a pretty good narrative. But if you feel that you could enhance it by adding more detail and description, it'll be a better essay. Um, I reiterate here that you have to read the chapter in uh, Strategies for Successful Writing on how to write a narrative. That will give you good background information, good examples of decent narratives, uh, things that you should be looking to accomplish in your essay. So make sure to do that reading. Point number four. This essay must be submitted through Canvas by the stated deadline, that's July 6th. Every day that it's late, the essay will lose one point. You can earn a maximum of 10 points on this essay. If it's a day late, the best you can do is a 9. If it's two days late, the best you can do is an 8. If it's three days late, the best you can do is a 7. If it's more than three days late, you're going to get a 0 on this, that assignment. So the deadline is mentioned here. Now let's talk about the prompt. And I'm going to pull that up. And this is how you are going to write your essay, or what you're going to write your essay about is, is more accurate. First, I define the term artifact. You guys might have heard the word before. You might think of uh, sunken treasure, or you might think of a lost civilization, um, or Raiders of the Lost Ark. You probably all heard the term artifact. Artifacts aren't just treasures, they're not just necessarily things from the past. So I give you guys a definition of an artifact. Artifact is defined by the Oxford American College Dictionary as a usually simple object, often a tool or an ornament, showing human workmanship or modification as distinguished from a natural object. Note, this is a man-made object, this is not a pet. This is not a house plant. This is not your sister. Um, this is a man-made object or tool. Now, your assignment for writing this narrative is pretty simple. You're going to look in your house, and you're going to find one artifact, just one, which best represents who you are as a person. Then, you are going to describe that artifact and this is where detail and description is important. But you're going to spend time um, describing this artifact, uh, detailing this artifact, so that I can actually almost visually see it, even if there's not a picture there. Your words will help make that artifact come alive to me. Finally, you need to explain why this artifact represents you. I will give you an example. In 1988, I bought a black leather motorcycle jacket because in 1988 I rode a motorcycle and I needed to have a cool jacket like all my other friends who uh, had black leather jackets. That is my artifact that represents who I am. That was 1988. Most of you were not alive back then. Um, what is that? 32 years ago. To this day, I still have that black leather jacket. Um, I've had a lot of possessions in my life. Um, I've owned cars, trucks, campers, boats, scuba gear, all sorts of things that I've had and I've gotten rid of, I've sold, but my leather jacket really represents who I am as a person. And I could easily write an essay describing that jacket and explaining how that jacket represents who I am as a person. Now, this is the tricky part, the last paragraph on this assignment sheet. After you've done your assigned reading on narrative, you will learn that a narrative is essentially a story. You guys have all heard stories, whether it was your parents reading you a bedtime story, or sitting around the campfire, you've heard stories, um, you know, scary stories, or um, you guys all know what a story is. Even more importantly, you guys all know what makes for a good story. If there is a good story, then 
you want to continue to hear it. You want to tune in. You're very interested in what's happening, what the details are. Contrast that with when we hear stories sometimes and we sort of tune it out, all right? That's a bad story. So your job with this essay is not only to pick that artifact, describe that artifact, and then explain how it represents you, but you need to incorporate that artifact into a story because a narrative is not a report. It's not just telling me, this is my artifact, this is what it looks like, this is why it represents me. That's not a narrative, that's a report. A narrative is a story, and you will get that when you read the assigned reading on narratives from your textbook. So it's your job not only to pick the artifact, not only to describe and detail the artifact, not just to show me or tell me how it represents you, it's your job to incorporate that artifact into a narrative, into a story. There's a saying in writing that a good narrative doesn't tell a story. A good narrative in writing shows the story. It makes it come alive. We all know when we hear a story whether it comes alive or whether it bores us to tears. So your challenge is to write this story about your artifact in a way that's challenging, um, in a way that makes it interesting to your reader. So I recommend click on the link, open up the prompt, just so you're familiar with it. You can reread this at your own leisure, um, but you do need to start getting writing on this particular assignment soon because it is due next week. Now, let's go back to our Canvas modules. And in module number one, I mentioned that the first link up there, ANC 1101 Narrative DocX, that's the prompt for the essay. That's what we just covered. The second one is ENC 1101 Class Notes on Narratives. This is essentially a summary of your assigned reading, and I'm going to cover some of it. I'm going to go through it relatively quickly because you guys are the ones who are going to do the assigned reading. You should pick it up in your text but I'm going to highlight some of the more important parts. This is also a link, class notes on narrative, so I'm going to click on that link right now, open it up for you guys, And I'll try to blow it up so it's a little easier for you guys to see. So it starts out, why use narrative? Why do we do narratives? Um, essentially, it's the most basic form of writing. Even before the written language was ever recorded, cavemen sat around campfires and they told stories about, let's say, slaying a mastodon or dragging the beautiful woman off by her hair. Stories have been around as long as we have had language. And a narrative, a story, is the most basic form of written language. I believe when I teach 1101, I start at the beginning. So we start with the basics, and a narrative is the most basic form of writing. It tells a story, it relays information, and a good narrative provides insight perhaps offers a lesson, maybe a moral. So if you're really wanting to go that extra mile and write a great narrative, try to think about how you can tell a story that might have a moral or a lesson to it. Why that artifact uh, is so important makes us think that, hey, that's something we should consider, not necessarily to own, but why our own objects are important to us. Now, a good narrative should have several elements, including action, conflict, and point of view. Action is important, all right? Now, I'm going to switch gears a little bit and move away from writing 
And let's talk about movies, because most of you can relate to seeing movies on TV or at the movie theater or whatever. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have watched foreign films, um, but a lot of foreign films, there's not a lot of action. I know, I'll never forget, my wife dragged me into a foreign theater, and we had to see this French film with English subtitles, and it was essentially two guys wearing berets sitting at this cafe outside, you know, on a Paris street, smoking cigarettes, and basically talking back and forth for an hour and 45 minutes. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, there's not a lot of action there. And because of that, I sort of tuned out after the first 20 minutes of the movie. On the other hand, action movies that have suspense, that have things getting blown up, uh, Bruce Willis fighting terrorists, when there's action in a story, we are drawn to that action. So action is essential. It doesn't have to be vividly described. It doesn't have to be clearly stated. Action doesn't have to be uh, Bruce Willis blowing up terrorists. It can be something as simple as drifting down a river in an inner tube, noticing, you know, first you're hitting some rapids, and then you see some wildlife on the side, hopefully not a big old gator, um, other people drifting further down the river from you who are drinking too much beer and acting like idiots. Those are all forms of action. It does not have to be glorified action like we see in films. There should also be a little bit of conflict in a good narrative. Everybody thinks of conflict as wars and fighting, perhaps arguing, that's conflict. That's how we all view conflict. That's external conflict. And a narrative can have external conflict, but there's also internal conflict. Think about when you were younger, perhaps you were forced to make a decision. Um, you know, should I go out with this guy or not? Uh, he has a bad reputation, my parents don't like him. Uh, you're conflicted, you really like the guy, but on the other hand, uh, there's something telling you that perhaps you shouldn't. Um, so conflict can be internalized. When we're talking about an artifact, let's say, um, your artifact, I'll use my leather jacket as an example. Um, part of me really wanted to buy this jacket, it was way out of my price range. I had to charge it in 1988. I didn't have a lot of income, so uh, I wasn't real excited about spending a lot of money. But I had this internal conflict about buying the jacket. So conflict doesn't have to be arguing or fighting or battles or wars. Conflict can also be internal. Um, so that's enough about conflict. Last, point of view. So point of view basically talks about what types of pronouns you will use in your story. And I don't want to throw too many grammatical terms at you early, but pronouns are things like I or he or she. Um, you can tell your narrative from a first person perspective. That's I. I bought this artifact. I struggled with whether or not I should buy it. I frequently thought about what it means to myself. That's first-person point of view. Because this is a narrative, I have no issue with you guys using I. Now, that said, down the road, I'm going to tell you guys, nope, no I allowed. All right, we'll talk about that for later assignments. But for this narrative, you can tell it in first person. It can also be in third person. If you don't want to use the I, if you want to kind of get out of the habit of using I, and I sort of think that's a good idea for down the road, you can talk about your character, yourself, in third person. Donnie did this, or Shelley did that. Um, he and she threw out the story. Just keep it consistent. So you don't necessarily have to tell it uh, from a first person perspective. In fact, it's a little more challenging to write in third person although it is a good habit to get into. So that's point of view. The main thing is be consistent. Um, and as I mentioned, the use of I is permitted. Now, your narrative should have 
some key events. It could be the purchase of that particular artifact, or it could be how that artifact was stolen from you and last, left a lasting impression on you, or it could be um, how that artifact represents a loved family member who might have passed or something like that. So um, there should be events tied to your artifact. Um, I said that it's important to have lots of details, uh, lots of description in your essay. One of the things that you should get out of your assigned reading is that while I ask you guys to have lots of details and lots of descriptions, avoid using them as fluff or filler. You don't need 17 different adjectives to define or describe your artifact. So use details, use descriptions, use them effectively, but certainly don't overuse those details. Now, we talked about key events. Let's talk a little bit about dialogue. Now, Dialogue is tricky because there is a certain format to it. Most folks see it when they read like a short story or they read a novel. They'll notice that when people are talking back and forth, um, they'll see that there's a different paragraph for each person talking. Um, I don't want to discourage you guys from using uh, dialogue in your narratives if, it, if you feel like it fits and if it works for you. Um, and I won't hold you really uh, responsible if your dialogue format is not perfect. The dialogue should be in quotes because it's people speaking, uh, but if you don't have a separate paragraph for each part of the dialogue, I'm okay with that. This is not a creative writing class. Uh, down the road, if you want to take that type of class, you can, and they'll show you the proper ways of doing dialogue. But the important things with dialogue, um, I don't know about you, but I can't recall exactly you know, what I said to my parents in 1988 when I told them about my black leather jacket. I can't recall what happened last week, let alone 32 years ago. On the other hand, it should be an accurate representation of what was said. We don't have to remember the exact words, but we want to get as close to it as possible. There's no way for me to check whether your dialogue is word for word the way it was discussed last week or last month or last year, but I'd like you guys to try to make dialogue um, as consistent with what actually happened as possible. All right, we're done with dialogue. Let's talk briefly about ethics. Now, I have the ethics section when we write narratives, but we're going to have the same ethics section when we do our descriptive essay, when we do our argument essay. Uh, so it's important to get these ideas out in the open. First, your narrative should be a truthful retelling of the facts. That doesn't mean that it's 100% accurate, but it means you strive to be as close to accurate as possible. This is not a creative writing class. You're not making up a story. You're telling a story that represents you to the best of your ability. So try to keep it um, as close to real as possible. A little artistic license is okay, but that's a fine line, and you guys are going to have to judge where that line falls. I'd like you guys to focus more on telling it as truthfully as possible but if you can't remember a friend's name from grade school or something, if you change the name, I'm not going to know and it's not going to be a big deal. Um, you can also change the names to protect the innocent. I've had some pretty, I don't know the right word for it, I've had some pretty explicit essays written by some of my students. Some of them are kind of hard to read. Um, some of the stuff they're identifying people that they've either had relationships with or had conflicts with. If you want to change the names to protect those people, I have no issue with that. Um, in fact, I actually encourage it because I don't want one of your people in your essay showing up in one of my classes later on down the road, and then I'm already making these mental associations with your narrative and their actions in the past. So anyway, you can change the names to protect the in innocent. And finally, don't encourage unethical behavior. 
Let's go back to my example of my leather jacket. If I told you that I didn't have the money to buy that leather jacket, uh, but I really wanted it, and that I actually stole that leather jacket and got away with it, and the rest of you, if you see something that's important and you can't afford it, you should go out there and steal it as well. That's not ethical, all right? So you don't want to contribute to unethical behavior in your narratives. You want to encourage things as being ethical. So don't glorify violence. Don't glorify theft. Don't glorify racism or misogyny or religious intolerance, whatever it is. Um, you want to try to put yourself in a moral standard um, where you are looked at in a good light. So those are some of the things that I'd like you guys to think about when writing your narrative. All of this information that I just covered on writing a narrative is covered in the assigned reading on narratives. I expect you guys to read this. I covered it briefly. I hit some of the highlights. But I really want you guys to write excellent narratives. And in order to do that, I think you're going to have to read a little more in depth on how to write a good narrative, how to incorporate details, how to leave out stuff that's not important. So do the reading and strategies for successful writing, pages 149 to 165 on narratives. And the chances are, if you put in the effort, if you start writing early, you're going to write good narrative. This is your first assignment for my class, your first writing assignment for my class. It's not particularly easy, but they don't get easier moving forward. So I'd like you guys to put in your best effort. I hope everybody walks out of here with a good grade on their narrative. If you have questions about this, you can Canvas inbox me. You can go to the Zoom meeting on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. I'll raise that question there, and I'll be happy to answer it. Um, so anyway, I hope you guys have a good week. If you need any help, reach out to me. I'll be happy to help you guys and hope you have a good rest of your week. You guys take care.